I'm David with the David West channel. Well, today I wanted to show you how you should start learning bow drill. But if you're first starting out, there's no need to try to make it all natural. You need to try to get the hang of it, see how you want to cut out your spindle and your fireboard and just get familiar with the tools and the materials and the technique. And also there's a balance to it. Getting down in the stance when you're ready to go ahead and, and crank down on that, uh, on the drill, there's a certain balance in the technique. You'll be a lot better off. You won't get discouraged as easily if you make your first bow drill success with a, with a two by four and use a cheap bearing block. I've got a video that shows you how you can make this bearing block. This is a bearing that I bought at Ace Hardware for $5. Here's a fatwood bearing block, or you can just take the end of the spindle and the, end, and the uh, divot in the bearing block and just spray and saturate it with WD-40. So you'll want to use a cheap bearing block. Don't worry about using natural cordage. Paracord will be just fine. You just want to get the hang. You just want to get a success under your belt. It doesn't matter how much you have to cheat to do it. Let's just get a random piece off my wood pile here for a bow. Now this is thicker than I normally use, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I mean, you spend a lot of time finding just the perfect branch for a bow. But for our instructional purposes today, let's go ahead and use this. Now, people tell you to use one that's from arm armpit to fingertip. This one's going to be a little short. Let's cut this one off right here. And we'll tie the string right around this knot right here. And you can just use a slip knot. Slip knot will hold it just fine. Let me point you down to the table a little bit more than that. Well, over this way. So, it's a slip knot. We'll just put it over here and tighten it very well. And I want it... I'm going to drill a through hole right here. Now, this is the way I like to tie a bow string onto a bow. You, uh, you choose whatever method you want. This little bit of slack right here is probably going to be enough for what we end up making. And then you wrap this around here, tight as you can wrap it. And then I just put a half hitch in it right here. I make a loop over my thumb just so I can have enough space to stick this in here and cinch it down. And 
just the roughness of this paracord, it'll stay tight. It'll cinch down and stay tight. And that's all we're going to need for a bow and a bowstring. That should work nicely. All right. Let's go ahead. Now, I've already examined this two by four. Which side you want to split? I want to split off something for the spindle now. And I initially thought that I would go ahead and avoid that knot right there. But when I got to looking at the grain on this side, you see how it dives over to the left. So even if I started like three quarters of an inch in and tried to make a split down here, you see it would all run over to the left. So therefore, since this grain right here is straighter on both sides, I'm just going to have to try to, because this knot isn't all the way through, I'm going to have to try to split off of this side. So we're going for a spindle that's uh, three quarters of an inch. So let me go ahead and split it at about an inch. Let me make sure you can see all the way up here. Splitting pretty bad on that side. Let's see. Let's see what we can do if we can come in on this side. And this one's doing the same thing. So when you make yours out of a two by four, you'll be looking for a fur two by four from the building supply. And hopefully yours will split better than mine was starting to split there and there. So let's go ahead and cut it at about one inch. And while we're cutting, let's go ahead and make a about a half inch, half inch fireboard. Spindle and fireboard. Right. Do your best to whittle it down to four square sides and then start rounding from there. And you may have to deal with some diving grain as you continue to whittle it on down. There's going to be some diving grain that takes you places you don't want to go, but you know, you can turn it over if it's not cutting just right. But just take your time with it and make a nice, true, round spindle.
I'm gonna put three levels of facets all the way around here. I'll start about a quarter inch down, come all the way around with facets, then come up an eighth inch all the way around with facets, and then that last little sixteenth. And that's what makes the perfect shape on your spindle. If you're missing something from this video, I have plenty of how-to bow drill videos. Uh, you might want to check those out too. And then just look at it, see if it's symmetrical, see what you need to touch up. looks pretty good right there so you hear a lot of people talking about making a spindle as long as from your pinky to your thumb which is eight inches I prefer a 12 inch spindle this one is 10 inches but it started off at about 14 and I'm glad that I had that 14 because here's some of that crack right there I cut some of that off and then there was some diving grain right here. I don't know if you can see the leftover on the very end. So I cut that off and I ended up with 10 inches and I'm really pleased with that. So let's go ahead and do the fireboard now. Let's go ahead and put a divot right here. Now, people are always trying to give you some kind of formula for where you should put it. You know, if it helps you, this, this would be about halfway here and come back about another eighth inch. You'll find what works best for you. So pretty much in the middle of this, this piece here. Let's go, do, go ahead and do a real good burn in. Fuel saw sounds better. All right. Now, you always want to anchor your wrist into your shin. I tell people that, and I still see them out here. Your wrist needs to be in your shin. That's why the placement of this board is very important. The placement of this board should be in the small of your foot. Now, the, and that can be adjusted. Everybody's body is different and everybody's style is different. And, uh, but for me, right in the small of the foot, and when I anchor to the shin, I'm pretty much uh, plumb. Slow and easy. Take your time, there's no hurry. People always ask me, how much are you bearing down? Well, for me, I don't really bear down. I'm pretty much just holding my balance here. And for me, balance was a big issue. When I first started bow drilling, to be in this position and to make sure that I could operate the bow properly and then I could, you know, I had my stance was right and my spindle was plumb. It was, there was an issue with my balance. It took a while before I could... I never hear anybody talking about balance in your stance, but it was an issue for me. So be aware, it might be a problem. Especially now that 
you know I'm on this hill. This is a pretty steep hill. So that affects the balance too. Alright. So now the spindle should be mated to that fireboard. Alright. And I'm gonna go back over to the table now and uh cut my notch. Now I think that needs to be rounder. Hold on. This needs to be rounder than that, so let me just fine tune it. I'll make it a little bit smaller, make it a little bit rounder, and you'll learn when when to tweak the tip of your spindle and when not to. And Take your time with it. There's no, there's no rush. Now, that's actually pointier than I would have liked, but I think it's going to work. So let me go cut my notch. Now, you can save this dust and reuse it. Let me get you set up on the table and I'll show you me cutting the notch. All right, you can make a square point notch or you can make a flat point notch and you don't want to go all the way to the very center. You can stop just shy of the center, but if you accidentally go to the center, it's okay. And I usually visualize where the edge of the hole is and that's how I figure where I want to start my notch at. people use a knife to notch this out this saw is just a whole lot quicker and that should work nicely right there some people like to take and cut that corner off right there they feel like air can get up underneath the ember better sometimes I do that most of the time I don't cut a I don't chamfer those corners most of the time and we're going to use pine needles. Just take your lob lolly pine needles and rough them up, rough them up, and process them till they get good and soft. Let's see what we can do with them. Make sure my string is still good and tight. There it is. I'm going to stick it up the way I put them in here is I stick it up between the string like that and just wrap it around to the front so that the spindle is on the outside of the string, not in here. All right, let's see what a pine 2x4 can do for us now. Sometimes you can do just like 40 strokes and get away with it. And other times I have to do like 100 strokes. I call one stroke a forward and a return. But the first thing that's going to happen, and there's no need to go crazy on this, is just take your time and gently fill that notch up with dust. Then when you feel like the notch is full, you can increase speed. And it should go ahead and ignite the dust. You got plenty of time once the amber forms because it actually helps it to just let it sit there and get hotter and hotter and coalesce. When an ember's first made, it's, it's liable to just come up to go all to pieces. But as it sits there and gets hot, it sort of melds together. And if you don't sweat into it, like I almost did, let's 
Let's see if we can get it to go. And then a lot of times I like waving it. Waving it will make it go to flames. Easier than blowing on it sometimes. So, I don't like how that tip wore. Um, but I'm just going to keep it like that. We need to do, I guess we'll just keep it. I got a little bit of pine needles left over. Let's do it again. Now, I'm having to bear down on the side of my string with my thumb to tighten it up. You know, I could tighten it up right here, take up a half inch of slack, but I'll just use my thumb on this one. Whole lot easier with a two by four. With a fresh two by four. And I like waving, so I want to get the ember started by blowing on it and then wave it the rest of the way. So it turned out pretty good. I'm sure I forgot to tell you a bunch of stuff. Oh, I hate the way the end of that spindle looks. Before I make another divot, which is time for another divot, I definitely put a, a round, a nice round point on that like we started with before. But uh, worked pretty good, didn't it? All right, y'all. I appreciate you joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.